Good evening. It's George Kaiho of Dallas, Texas. Uh, I'm going to start a new series uh, for me to like review each bottle. So I'm going to pick up one bottle uh, per video and then explain the background uh, tasting. And then I'm going to make a cocktail using this uh, spirit. I'm going to make a cocktail that I think it represents the best of this particular bottle. Uh, the video number one, I'm going to do Jafar Cremita Mint. I'm going to do a mint liqueur on my very first uh, review video. <laughs> why, why did I pick this? There's like, no reason. I was earlier, uh, I was kind of experimenting a cocktail using this. And uh, I thought about doing this video, so I'll just put, use this one instead. Because uh, this is a very extremely good brand. So, all right. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk uh, mint liqueurs in general. I'm sure you have seen mint liqueurs at a bar, like mint flavored stuff. You know, there, there are many out there. Rumble mint. Uh, <laughs> the Kuiper. Jafar Cremant Mint Pastille. This is, in my personal opinion, is the best mint liqueur around. So, compared to most mint liqueurs you have, you might have had, this is way beyond for quality, like the like flavor and then like basically the finesse uh, it beats it all there's another brand I'll probably explain in the middle uh, those that one and this one is pretty up there uh, my personal favorite is the Jaffard all right so let me give you a little bit of the uh, story about this brand so Jaffard is of course um, a Jaffard a brand based out of France uh, the town called Angers France in the Loire Valley. Loire Valley or Loire, like there's a river. Uh, it's in center France. Uh, very famous for wine. Uh, if, you, if you are a wine person, there's a region called uh, Anger Samuel. That's famous for the like, Gamay. And I think they make uh, some, uh, Sauvignon Blanc and other stuff. It's, it's a, like a really good region for fruits. Uh, I heard it's a very beautiful place you know, to go. I wish I could go. Uh, they make all kinds of different liqueurs and more than probably 30. Uh, I have several of my personal favorites. This line, this label is like the higher quality one. This one is like the mid-tier. And my personal favorite is the apric apricot. And they also have a uh, like ginger, of course, creme de cassis, uh, all kinds of stuff. Pineapple. This is cacao. Yeah, they have all kinds of uh, rhubarb. It's probably one of their uh, newer flavor. I think it came out last year. Anyways, uh, this is actually what made Jafar Jafar, the creme de mint pastille. This is the first product that made 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 the company basically so uh it dates back to 1885 in the summer uh apparently it was a very hot summer that year speaking of which i live in dallas texas y'all <laughs> dallas texas uh we're right now it's mid august we're right in the middle of the all the 100 100 fahrenheit uh, days i think it's gonna be a lot. This year is more mild compared to other years, but still, uh, the heat is no joke. When the heat is no joke, you it makes you wanna drink something that's refreshing, right? Like something that you drink and that we kind of stuff. So mint is a, is a great thing to experience. That's why like uh, originally the What's that called? The julep was, was a big thing. 
uh, to beat beat the heat because back then there's no there's not even ice back then. No. Okay, so 1885, the owner uh, Emilie Giffard. Emilie Giffard. He owned a firm pharmacy, and he saw the heat, so like he started to think, oh, maybe I should make a, a mint liqueur and then like, pass it around because like it's you know it's a nice thing to do, give it to people, maybe sell it. And so he made a mint liqueur, or creme de mint in, in France. Uh, and apparently it was a huge success. Every, everybody loved it. So Emilie Jafar went like, oh shit, I, I can, I'm good at this. I'm, I can make a good mint liqueur. Like my, I should be doing this instead of pharmacy. <laughs> I can make tons of money. And he did. So he started with a mint liqueur and quickly found out it's a, it's a big hit. So he got um, a distillery and actually started producing, producing liquor and it's still family owned today. Uh, mint pastillo, the pastillo, usually it's called creme de mint and then there's, that's it. But uh, it's called pastillo. I always wonder why it was called, called Pastillo, and then I look up their website, and uh, it said, uh, it actually, there was a, a really famous uh, snack, a candy, I assume. It was mint flavored, that's called Pastillo, so they used that, so I was like, yeah, huh, okay. It's like, I thought it was a little bit more, eh, it's okay, it's good. Okay, now let's, let's taste it. All right, tasting glass. So, other than the fact that it's mint liqueur, liqueur, uh, just so you guys know, are basically, you start it with the alcohol, like a, like a vodka, and then you add whatever flavor you want to add. It could be the real stuff, or it could be juice, or it could be essential oil, or uh, can it be? I don't know. Anyways, you add whatever flavorings, and then typically, uh, you add sugar also, you sweeten it, and typically the alcohol level is not as high. Typically, it, there's, it's, there's no like specific, like, but usually it's a liqueur with added flavors that's in added sugar. Uh, that's what a liqueur or creme de X, Y, Z usually are, okay? So assuming that it is on the sweeter side, I check the viscosity. It's actually, it's not as syrupy. It's not like water or anything, but, or like high alcohol, but uh, it flows pretty quick. So the viscosity is more light in a sense. Yeah. Mm. For the nose, it's very bursting of like peppermint. Uh, just so you know, like there are several mints out there, right? Like the popular ones are uh, spearmint, which probably you will see the most at stores or whatnot, uh, or like it grows all over the place. Spearmint usually have more softer flavor and um, it's not as intense, but it's like mild. Uh, it could be a little grassy if it's not as good quality, but uh, it's mild and soft. Peppermint is a lot more sharp in a sense that it kind of hits you like like when you eat like a mint candy or whatever like a gum that has like a the way kind of wakes you up uh, those are more on the like or like a menthol uh, those are more peppermint it's kind of kind of it kind of sh shoots up your nose uh, it kind of it has this one because it's made mostly from peppermint. It does have that very sharp, uh, goes up your nose type of uh, smell. Hmm. Now I'm trying to pick up different notes that's not mint, but uh, I can't really find anything else. Uh, if it's a whiskey or gin or stuff like that, you know, the nosing could be pretty fun because you can pick up different stuff like Fresh caught garden hose kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's pretty 
straightforward but very like go through cuts through your nose type of uh, nose hmm. the mouthfeel is very clean uh, it's not syrupy at all it, it doesn't coat your tongue or anything it just kind of goes in and then the nose shoots up and then the liquid goes down disappears and then it leaves a very nice uh, peppermint uh, mouth it's just like uh, it's not a good way to say this but it's like a list like a like a, it's just after you finish like doing Listerine kind of feel but, but pleasant <laughs> pleasant it's not it's not like destroying your mouth or anything uh, but uh, very extremely strong minty flavor but uh, one thing which is the point where I'm gonna bring in another brand uh, is uh, this brand this is a cacao so it's not the same but uh, Tempest Fugit Tempest Fugit makes cremated mint also and that cremated mint is actually also very high quality in my opinion uh, they're like Tempest Fugit cremated mint and then Jeffard cremated mint pastille are quality wise very high both of them are very good but uh whenever i taste i was doing tasting line tasting there's a pretty big difference in the texture and also a little bit on the flavor uh this one is just like really shoots up and like you drink it you whoa like the like the the halls commercial <laughs> whoa what was that kind of thing this is the Jafar. uh tempest fuja it's more like it stays in you you drink it and then the tech the liquid texture is very heavy it's like whoa, kind of takes over and then mint 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 kind of kind of stuff so they're both really good uh <clears throat> i'm gonna make a cocktail later it's the grasshopper uh, I'll explain a little bit more later but uh, I had this cocktail on the menu so I was making it every day so that's why uh, back in the day last uh, winter I was doing like experimenting with different brands so that's why I know the difference and that's why I picked this brand for for specific reasons okay so so there's a really like a texture difference compared to other brands. Uh, I'm not gonna line taste anything lower quality than this because I'm already happy. I don't need to taste the cheap cheap stuff. Good stuff. A lot of people still drink it on the rocks in France. I think I'm pretty sure. All right, so I'm gonna make a cocktail using the Giffard Cremant Pastille and i'm gonna make a cocktail called the grasshopper grasshopper the grasshopper is a classic cocktail probably was it was popular in the 50s i think i could be wrong uh it's considered as a dessert cocktail original ratio or recipe is equal parts uh mint liqueur usually green color and then uh, cream and cacao and then heavy cream equal parts shake it and that kind of stuff uh, it's considered very sweet very desserty it's you drink dessert instead of eating dessert kind of cocktail so i wanted to put it on my bar's menu last uh, winter because i like personally i like this kind of stuff that it's like a classic cocktail that was once popular but nowadays people that like, kind of know about it but they don't really drink it and if you make it exactly as people used to make it doesn't really fit modern palette like people today won't really like it but if you make it the right way it, it tastes amazing so i'm about to start so the brands I'm gonna use 
going to be Jafard, or Jafa, criminal mint pastille, and a criminal cacao by Jafa, also. And then I'm going to use a whiskey. This is a very interesting whiskey. Uh, I'll probably do a video about this one, but uh, basically it's a rye whiskey from Waco, Texas, uh, that has a chocolatey character to it. Uh, really good stuff. I love this whiskey, but I won't explain too much detail because it's about this thing today. All right, and then last, uh, instead of heavy cream, I like to use uh, coconut cream. This is my ploy from Thailand because I own a Thai restaurant also. My wife does actually. Uh, so coconut cream. I often use coconut cream instead of uh, heavy cream. Of course, it depends on the cocktail. Like for example, uh, if I use coconut cream for a uh, Ramos Gym Fizz, it doesn't exactly taste as it should. So like there are good like things that you can or cannot use. But in this case, uh, it's, it's really about the mint and chocolate character. So you just kind of want the creamy texture and not necessarily the, the milky flavor. So uh, in this case, it works well. And uh, I like to use uh, coconut cream because like today I meet a lot of vegan people. Uh, so that's, you know, it, it's uh, ease for them. And it, it lasts longer. It doesn't, it doesn't go bad in a, in a uh, gross way. It, yeah, that kind of stuff. I like to use it. Okay, uh, ratio I'm gonna use. <coughs> is pretty simple. I'm going to do one ounce each of these two and half an ounce each of these two. So pretty straight, straightforward. One ounce, one ounce, half an ounce, half an ounce. All right, let's get started. Jaffa. Jaffa. Oh, I made a mistake. All right, half an ounce, huh? Not, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out later, okay. The thing is, I don't edit the video, so if I make mistakes, I cannot stop. All right, so the key to be successful is to don't mess up. Then you'll be successful. All right, one ounce of this thing. All right. So all the stuff are in, but one thing is that uh, it's this is clear, clear uh, a little bit color white and clear. So it's not gonna be a green cocktail. So. If you serve a grasshoppers, a grasshopper in this white, it's kind of weird, right? So let me add a, a little matcha, matcha, a little bit of matcha, probably about a gram. It's not really for the flavor. It, I don't think it will, because these two are so strong, it's not going to really add flavor to it, but it's like better than nothing kind of situation. All right, I'm gonna give it a little mix. Try to get the matcha in. All right, it's cooperating with me. The matcha, I appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna shake it and strain. All right, I'm gonna explain before I start uh, what I'm about to do. My shake uh, on this cocktail is gonna be fast and short. The shake is gonna be fast and short. Fast and short. The reason is uh, these are all like except like this is strong alcohol, but I'm only using half an ounce, and about 20 percent, twenty four percent, fifty percent, no percent. So it's not I'm not dealing with a lot of high alcohol liquid, so I don't want the cocktail to be watered down too much. That's why I'm, I'm not gonna shake it for like forever. Uh, but I do want the frothy texture. 
of the cream. You kind of want like a whipped cream kind of situation. <laughs> whipped cream kind of situation. Uh, I do want to mix it well and make it fluffy. So I'm gonna shake it like with a short but a fast stroke. And then I'm not gonna shake it too long. So uh, please uh, pay attention. That in mind. All right. And then I'm gonna double strain this one so that it's not gonna have any extra ice flakes. And also going through the strainer kind of helps uh, a little bit with the foam. All right. I don't know if you can see this, but it is pretty good on the foamy and nice green, green color. So I didn't mess up off after all. All right, garnish is gonna be nutmeg, nice aroma. And then uh, this is a single origin chocolate from a brand called uh, Aski Noisy. They make, they import and make good chocolate. Uh, this particular one is uh, from Tanzania, 72%. And it's called uh, Mabubu. It's from Tanzania, and the chocolate is called Mabubu. All right. So I'm gonna sprinkle some sprinkle Mabubu. I'm gonna sprinkle Mabubu. All right, Mabubu done, and I'm done. All right. Hope you can see this. If not, I'm gonna take a picture and then uh, put it somewhere. Maybe in the, maybe on the first part, so that you probably seen it already. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna drink it. Hmm, aroma nice, chocolatey. Ah, okay, nutmeg. I find it too. Okay, cool. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I get the chocolate flavor up front, and then creaminess. Uh, the alcohol level is it's not high. I uh, feel like I can just it's like chuggable, and at the end the mint part really finishes clean it cleans it off. But overall, I don't like it's it doesn't leave any like sugary uh, sweetness like on your tongue. Maybe a little bit, but it's really pleasant on the sweetness scale. So it is mint and chocolate and cream. So it has all that kind of the dessert cocktail components to it. But uh, even before dinner, like it doesn't really matter when to drink it. It's, it's, this is a really good, uh, this is a really good grasshopper. Yeah. I knew it because I used to serve this at my bar. <laughs> exact recipe. So I'm acting like I, I made it. I made it for the first time, but I actually been make, using this recipe and been making grasshoppers last winter. So I knew it was good. All right. So you got the recipe. Um, this is very important. Other stuff, kind of important. But to make a good grasshopper, this is the key. If you use cheaper brands, it's not going to taste as good as this. All right? So, Jafard, you didn't ask me for making the video, but I, I made the video. <laughs> if you watch it, give me, give me a, send me a text. All right, thank you so much. Now, if you like the video, I'm gonna do more of this kind of stuff. Uh, if you like the video, you know what to do, right? Thank you.